All right, gentlemen and singular lady, um, this is going to be a little bit more math focused, but I think that you guys are going to enjoy this a lot. So this is just going to be a part one. I'm going to keep this relatively quick and not very complicated. Um, but basically we're going to get into the realm of intersection functions and all of the fun shit that you can do with them. And it's super crazy. Um, I've showcased some of my earlier experimentations with them in previous videos, but basically these things are the backbone of all 3D rendering. And because of that, they can do a lot of things if utilized the right way. So let's go through a quick overview this is just going to be episode one basically the der derivation of a simple planar intersection function uh, so i made this uh, little document that i wrote in latex over the past hour or so and this basically covers the entire derivation from the from basics to um, the final formula and I'll be going over this, and I'll be showing you the implementation in Blender. And then some of the applications will be uh, evaluated on the next part. So this might be a little bit boring, but I mean, this is kind of the fundamentals. So let's get started. So first of all, I should show you what this thing does. So this is its implementation in Blender. And what it does is it creates a, a plane, essentially, right? As you might expect from a planar intersection function. Uh, it's easy to see here because I have the camera position. I, I'm going to just put that there. And this is going to be ray direction. So that's pretty easy to see. Uh, because we're just using the ray is going to be the rays sh shot by the camera um, which is where this stuff comes from uh, the incoming vector in here um, that basically is the ray direction uh, that's just kind of like by definition and then, so that's the input for the rays. We need a position, an origin, and a direction for both a ray and a plane. Um, so the plane origin, let's set it at zero, zero, zero. You can push it down a little bit by setting the Z to negative one. And we can push it up a little bit. Uh, we can also uh, change the direction. Voila, and we can change the origin then. That's pretty fun. Anyways, so that's sort of what it does. Um, I'm betting I'm betting you can already see some of the applications this has, but let's get into the derivation. And you guys, even if you have a hint of what can be done, I don't think you guys actually know like the full extent of what can be done. Uh, we're, we'll be getting into that later on but we first must cover the basics unfortunately so this is an artifact of vector math and it's literally the the name says it all so it return it's a function that returns the intersection point between array and a plane so we need two things we need a plane and we need array so Array is just a line and a plane is just a plane, but we need to quantify these, right? So planes can be defined by a normal vector, right? We're just gonna call that N here, and that's just gonna be like A, B, and C. This is just, this would be the X value, this would be the Y value, this would be a Z value, or uh, in Blender, red, green, and blue. And so a plane has a normal vector that passes uh, and a point that it passes through. 
it's just going to be point p and it's going to we're just going to call it x not z not or x not y not z not and this plane can be described by this equation ax plus by plus cz equals ax not plus by not plus cz not so that's basically it that's a plane it derives it's derived uh, or not really derived it's it's extended from this definition of a line which you can like plug into desmos and see um, why it works um, but for this because we're using vector operations and not scalar ones we need to use the dot product um, which is defined as this the it's an operation between two vectors and it looks like that v dot u uh, with a big, big dot. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. I know somebody's going to complain about that. Uh, anyways, so U is just this list of values. V is just this list of values. So basically, it. this is the end result. This fancy notation is probably not necessary because if you know what a dot product is, you already know um what this is what this means this is a capital sigma and like vice versa if you don't know it you probably don't know what that means so um that's the dot product so it's pretty clear that this is a form of that between the vectors n and this x y and z vector which is just essentially an arbitrary point on the space so the equation can be rewritten as n dot x, y, z equals n dot p. All right. So that's a very simple equation for the plane. So now we must define a straight line. And this is going to be our definition. It's a parametric line, which means it's parameterized to this variable t so we could vary the position or the, the output vector based on uh, an input value t right we can do that because it's unidimensional um, there are ways to do this with planes as well and other stuff that's kind of a more of a linear algebra concept though so this dx dt these these are actually calculus terms but i just put them in there because they describe it uh, this is essentially the rate of change in x, this is the rate of change in y, this is the rate of change in z, and together they basically make the direction vector of the line. Um, so, yeah. So anyways, we need to basically plug our equation for a line, this thing, into the equation for a plane, which we got uh, from up here. And then we can basically do algebra with this. So uh, the dot product is a linear operation, which means you can distribute it and it's commutative and all that, all that stuff. Uh, but it doesn't mean that you can like divide it. Like for instance, you can't just pull the dot, the end dot out of there. Uh, so this is just basic algebra and stuff. Um, it's useful to note that this is a scalar value and this is a scalar value. So this is actually a scalar, uh, a, yeah, a scalar uh, equation that just looks like a vector one. So we. We essentially we derive that uh, oh, it looks like I forgot to get the final value for t in there uh, regardless uh, it's pretty easy to see the algebra that goes on we just divide this by that and we get uh, this value for t so plug that back into our equation for a line and this x, y, and z point, which is our intersection point, comes out to be our initial position of the ray, plus this value we got for t times the direction of the vector. 
So, implemented it into Blender. I'm just going to re-implement this because we can. So I'm going to take these two out. I guess literally five nodes. So I'm going to take those two out. Let me pull this into one side. So this is our camera position. This is actually a vector transform node set to these values, point, camera, and world, and then zero, zero, zero. And then this ray direction is actually a geometry node, and we're going to be using the incoming output. So we have XYZ equals our initial position, uh, which is this camera position, plus, so I'm going to use a uh, vector math. Where did that go? Uh, I guess it didn't go. Vector math. The hell? Order vector math. Okay. Something was going weird there. Anyways, this is a little bit easier to see. So, camera position. We're going to add this to. We're going to add this to that. So let's first start by breaking this down more. So we've got, we're multiplying this by, so this is a scalar value because it's got two dot products. So we're multiplying this scalar value by this dx, dy, and dt, um, or dx, dy, and dz. That's our ray direction. So that's going to be the incoming. So I'm going to do a scale because we're multiplying a scalar by a vector scale this by that so now we need um, now we need to craft this function so we need n which is the normal vector of our plane I'm going to use a combine XYZ I'm just going to call this over here in actually there we go I'm just going to call this plane normal we duplicate this again. We need um, this P, which is going to be the plane origin. So this is going to be plane origin. And just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to set Z to be one. So we need N dot P minus our initial position. So this is going to be a vector math P. Oh, uh, where is it? Subtract minus camera position. And then we're going to use the dot product, uh, which is right here. Dot n, which is our plane normal. And then we're going to use another dot product, n dot our, uh, oops, n dot ray direction. And then we are going to use a regular math because we're operating on two scalars here. As you can see by that, we're going to divide, divide our n dot d, whatever this is, dx, dy, dz, n dot that, or we're going to be dividing this thing by that. That's the fraction. And then we're going to put that into the scaling thing because it's multiplied by uh, dx, dy, and dz. And then we are going to add that back into here. And then we can tidy it up a little bit. And let's preview this. So this is our final output. And we can see it created a plane. Eha, lovely. Isn't that cool? So in this one, it's pretty much the exact same. Uh, you can analyze it if you want, but I also have this less than. 
thing. This is called the discriminant. So it's basically what happens is a line will always intersect with a plane, but we only want to calculate its intersection and return a value when the plane is in front of the camera instead of behind it, or else we're getting both, right? So this is essentially finding, this is the t value. So if t is less than zero, uh, actually technically it should be greater than, and then we should just add a negative one here. This incoming ray value is actually like inverted. And then we do a greater than, and that's the same thing. So only when t is greater than zero, in other words, in front of the camera, uh, we should see this. So that's basically that. Um, in the next video, I will be delving into some of the fun things we can do with this thing. And that will be very fun, I presume. Uh, so we're going to get into stuff like shadows and uh, all that other fun stuff. Uh, might maybe like PBR rendering done manually. That would be pretty neat. Anyways, uh, I'll see you guys later and have a good one.